Welcome to the show, From the Soapbox to the Stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbett. If you've ever dreamed of standing on a stage to inspire, educate, or motivate an audience, then you're going to want to stay tuned. I'll be interviewing top speakers and sharing tips on each episode for helping aspiring speakers, as well as those who already have stepped onto a stage, how to move from public speaker to professional speaker. Many people get opportunities to present to a group or speak at an event, but how many of those actually get invited back to do it again? Only those with the talent and professional business skills that event planners and organizers are looking for. That's what viewers will learn here as they hear from professional speakers who have been there and have done that. With me on the show today is Frank DeRaffoli, founder and president of Entrepreneur Excellence Worldwide Incorporated, a personal and professional development firm. He's the co-author of the book, Business Networking and Sex, Not What You Think, which became the number one best-selling book on Amazon in nine different categories, and number two in overall book sales, only behind The Hunger Games. He is an internationally acclaimed motivational speaker, trainer, and CEO performance coach, and incorporated his first business at the age of 18 while attending college at Syracuse University. Welcome to the show, Frank. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Uh, you got a lot of experience there. So why don't we get started right away, because our time is limited, but I want to find out, what is. let's start with what you do. What is it you do now as a professional speaker, so people watching the show can figure out, you know, what do professional speakers do, and what is their goal? Well, I mean, my, my specialty, if you will, is entrepreneurship. So I cover a lot of different topic matter that applies to entrepreneurs. I've been a small business entrepreneur my whole life, and then I realized that that's really what my specialty is. I've been working with them my whole life. So for me, when I go out and speak, and even though I speak to large corporations, I'll sometimes speak about the entrepreneurial mindset within the corporation, but I'll talk about things like marketing, sales, customer service, management, leadership, teamwork development, everything around making the entrepreneur more successful. Um, so for me, when I'm, when I'm going out, I'm really getting focused on how do I make people more successful? How do I take knowledge and turn it into cash, if you will? That's what I want them to do. That they learn more and more, and how do they take that and actually convert it into something that's going to make it different, make them more profitable. That's my focus. So what kind of groups do you It'll vary from um, associations, you know, from every type of association, like the accounting association to, um, I did a travel association to cruise lines to, um, I mean, to Fortune 1000 companies. I mean, it's, it's for me, it's so varied across the board uh, because the different messages that I have are really focus on things. And I'll talk to things about networking and referral business and sales and marketing and working as a team together. So, you know, the, they're universal principles, but what I do is I don't have canned presentations. Meaning, some, if you said to me, well, Frank, I saw you speaking over at that place, um, can you come do that for us? My answer is, well, kind of. Like, I'll talk about that subject matter, but I want to customize it to you and your people and what you need. So I'll cover the same subject matter, but I want to be very, very specific for that audience that I'm in front of. And I think that's really important. Uh, so we got a clip coming up here. I want to get the uh, crew ready. If we can roll that uh, clip. This is a clip of you speaking okay. um, that, I, that I captured off your your uh, your website and I thought it was really interesting because re you really look like you had that audience in the palm of your hand so let's go ahead now and take a look at that clip I'd like to do if I could have about uh, let's see about ten gentlemen in the room stand up right now I need ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. you guys can sit unless of course you want no not you guys, you guys <laughs> They ruined it for me. Okay, so about this many. We have about 900 people in the room. These 10 gentlemen are ruining it for the rest of us. Okay? These 10. Sit down. And Neary, just so you know, I'm not surprised you stood up during that. Okay? All right? So we have to kind of get out of that image. We have the reality is that we're ruining it for each other, gentlemen. We have to look at it and say, how can we get better? Okay, but we're going out and this is the impression that's made. And so we're looking at different things. How do we make ourselves better? And so I want this presentation, not just a book, but this presentation for you to have a takeaway. So I'm going to do a little bit of a role model for you of gentlemen, how you should be, really be, you know, conversing with somebody correctly. Hazel, can you come up here, please? <laughs> so let's say we're meeting at a networking event. Okay, a good way to do this be, Hi, Hazel, I'm Frank Garaffley. Hi, nice Frank Garaffley, Hazel Walker. Hey, it's nice to meet you. Nice so to Hazel, meet you what is it that you do? I run the world. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so I've heard. Um, okay, so was, any, was there any, was that offensive at all? Okay, gentlemen, here's another way. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> right? Not good. That's what not, do you have a takeaway now? You have a takeaway? <laughs> That's a great clip. I love that. Uh, did, did she catch you off guard? Well, what happened? Or did, she, is, did you know? Well, I I'm very spontaneous on stage. So when I was sitting there, and I think Ivan was up before us, I was when I was getting my chair, I said to her, "I'm going to call you up for something." And she's like, uh, "Okay." So she had no idea why I was calling her up. And her and I are like like brother and sister, you know. So she came up, and she's very spontaneous, obviously. Also, I had no idea she was going to say that. That's why when she said it, I, you saw me hesitate for a second because I was processing what she said. And then I just doubled over laughing because I was just like, that was just hilarious. And so it just, it made it really fun. It was really great. So in, in my book, I wrote the, in the, uh, from the soapbox to the stage, I have this whole chapter on how to use volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I was watching that clip and I'm thinking about what I suggest to people that, you know, you, you practice beforehand so that you don't catch anybody <laughs> off guard because <laughs> if you don't practice it, it can go one way or yep, the other. Absolutely. It can screw up your presentation or it can contribute to it uh, like that obviously did. It's, a, it's like it's like change. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about what you do, and you do a, a great job, a great craft, I'm watching you on stage here, you've really mastered the stage. And uh, speakers like you who do that good of a job are great, are great um, you know, role models for people to model after and say, I'm going to do that, I want to be like that, to move comfortably back and forth on the stage right. and, and uh, have the, the people in the palm of your hand. How did you get there? Um, you know, I started just... At first, I was, I've been doing a lot of teaching. You know, I just went out and did a lot of teaching, and I, I got involved in speaking kind of by mistake. I didn't even know the industry existed. When I started doing it, um, it it's actually, you know what really inspired me one time? I was, I was years ago, 25 years ago, whatever it was. I'm turning the channels, watching TV, and I stopped, and there's this guy speaking. And I'm just kind of like, like, who is this? And 45 minutes later, I'm still watching him. It was Les Brown. Now, Les Brown's my favorite motivational speaker of all times, and he was on a PBS special, kind of like raising money for them. And, I, and But about 10 minutes into this, I'm watching, I said, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like, it hit me like, this is what I'm supposed to, not like I hope to be him someday or as good as him. I was like, that's, what I, that's me. And all of a sudden it hit me, I said, I'm going to do that. I didn't know how, I didn't know what it meant. But when I started speaking to me, once I started feeling that confidence on stage that I was doing, I believe in taking risks all the time pushing yourself, never doing the same thing, always going past it. I'm not saying everybody should do that. I do that. And, I, and anybody that I coach in speaking, I tell them, I want you to keep pushing. I want you to go beyond. Like calling her up and not knowing it was going to go on. Like you said, that could totally blow. I love that. I love that that's going to happen up there and we'll make it up as we go on. I'm very comfortable there on stage and doing it. So to me, when I look at people, they say, well, am I supposed to move like you do on stage? Or no, you're supposed to be you. And you're supposed to command the stage in your personality, in your way. I know some guys who are, like, I, I think of, uh, remember the old comedian Stephen Wright? Yeah. And yeah. Stephen Wright went out and he said, I had a dog. His dog, right? He was monotone <laughs> still. And I'm thinking, yeah. this guy is so good at what he does because that is such a big risk that he lets the audience figure out the joke, right? And I'm thinking to myself, but look what he's doing. He makes him different. I know other guys who, who talk very quietly and don't move as much. And they shouldn't try and be me. Okay, they should just be themselves in their own style. But once they know their style, then command that style and what they're doing. For me, I always like to push it. I want to me the, the shortest distance to two people is laughter. So I want to get people laughing all the time. And I go up there and I'll always try and find something that's funny. And most of the times that I'm funny on stage, I have no idea that I'm going to do that. It just happens during the, the thing. I come up with a story that happens. Somebody does something to the audience I react to. And I just kind of go with that. And that, that's, for me, that's really powerful. And I love doing that. All right. So you watch Les Brown. You kind of got the inspiration and said, hey, I think I'm supposed to do that. Yep. So then what happened? Um, then I, I went out and I bought Les Brown's book and his audio book, the cassette at that time. I'm dating myself now. <laughs> I bought the cassette. Eight track? No, I'm sorry, cassette. <laughs> right. So I start listening to that and listen to it, you know, dozens and dozens of times. And then one time, after dozens of times listening to it, um, I hear him say one sentence in there about the National Speakers Association. And I was like, what's that? And, and now back then, there's no internet, so I can't Google National Speakers. Yeah, right. So I'm like, what is that? And I start, to, I don't even know how I researched it, but somehow I researched it. Um, found out that that was the Professional Speaking Association for Speakers, and I said, well, if Les says to do it, I'm going to join that organization. 
And then I go and I get involved. I got involved in the New York Tri-State chapter down in New York City. Um, and I started learning the business of speaking. And that's really what they do. It's not a Toastmaster. It's not teaching you how to speak. It's once you know how to speak and you want to make a living at it, they're going to teach you the business of speaking or help you learn the business of speaking in terms of that. Um, and it's a network of all speakers. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in networking. So I was like, you got to, there, there's a thing that Fran Tarkenton said years ago when he went from football to business and he said, and he's a very successful business person. And he said, you have to put yourself in play. If you want to make it happen, if you want to do something in life, put yourself in play. So that to me meant dive in head first, right? So if I want to do this, I got to join these networks, meet these people. Where are the people that, I, that, want, that do what I want to do, where are they? And I have to go network with them. I went down to New York Tri-State. Within six months, I got on the board there, started networking with people, and then my first book came out of that networking that I did there. I was able to write my first book as a guy that was there called me and said, let's do a book together. And there it was. All right, so let me ask you a question. In my book I wrote in the, from the soapbox of the stage, I talk about finding your topic. you got to figure out what your topic is. And sometimes you, you have to refine it. It might yep. change slightly. So I just want to ask you about your topic. When did you have your topic nailed down to know what you were going to talk about? Was that when before or after you went to NSA or, or started going there? Yeah, it, that's, a, that's a good question. I think when I first started speaking, I was doing kind of motivational stuff, you know, get it together, do that. And I also was doing things on networking and because and I was, I was doing entrepreneurial stuff then. I didn't really get that I could be an entrepreneurial speaker. I didn't know that that was a topic matter for me. Um, but I was doing a lot of stuff with networking, referral, word of mouth marketing, also motivation. Um, and then I started honing down kind of that networking thing and really started doing say, hey, this is something that can apply to everybody. And I figured no matter what industry, what it was, I became more and more of a specialist in growing your business through word of mouth marketing, referrals, and networking. And I started getting a reputation on that. That's how my first book came about because I started building that reputation and somebody called me for it. So um, it's, it's, when I talk about passion and speaking, it's what's your passion? What do you want to do? What's going to make you happy? And go after that. Develop that niche. And that's where you're, and then make you sorry you know that subject matter well. All right, so networking is one of your top topics. Right. What, are there any, um, are there any uh, types of business that networking doesn't work for? Uh, yes and no. I mean, to me, it's, it's anybody that's going out doing sales and networking is going to work. It's a matter of how to adapt it to make it work. It's not going to work for non-sales oriented businesses. If it's, there's a police association, networking, I mean, it can work internally. They got to network with other people, but it's different than what I talk about. I talk about business networking for sales and profits. You know, if it's a teacher's association, I can adapt it to networking because they can network to get yourself up the corporate ladder and to, to, to build a group of people together and, and whatever else. But my real subject matter is about networking for business and for building profits. But I've adapted it to all different types of situations. So pretty much every business can do a version of what I call networking, but it just depends on what they're doing. So I just, and we only got a couple of minutes, but you talk about networking. Uh, just real quick, BNI, B &I, good networking organization. Yeah. Great networking organization, um, a great referral organization, uh, largest of its kind in the world. And you know, um, I've been involved with the organization for 20 years, seen it grown dramatically, and I think it's a uh, it's a great way for people to learn how to network and grow their business through referrals and word of mouth. Okay, marketing. good. All right, well, uh, Frank, if you stay with stay with me, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some tips of what you would offer tips sure. for speakers. Well, we've all heard the word passion when it comes to speaking to groups, but what exactly is it and why do we care? Frank and I will share all that with you when we come back from our break, so stay with us. Don't go away.